Hey guys, Rusty over here with a new guide for you, gonna be showing you how you can solo Mythic Tomb of Sargeras. Now most of the bosses are fairly easy, the last two are going to be your biggest challenge, with Mythic Avatar being a very, very tight and big DPS check, and Mythic Kill Jading probably being a little bit harder for classes with lower mobility. Now I will leave chapters in the video and timestamps right if you want to skip to specific areas and bosses, however I do recommend watching the next part where I talk about the Heart of Azeroth, as it will help with your damage a little bit. So with that being said, let's get right into the guy. Now I did this around 209 item level, but that is with the Heart of Azeroth necklace from Battle for Azeroth being equipped for the Azerite Essences, which in my opinion are really worth using, which by the way, if you didn't know, those still do work outside of anything that is not in Shadowlands. Now you can also use the Azerite gear for the traits, but in my opinion, guys, those really aren't worth using, replaced to right, replacing the stats from your Shadowlands gear. Now, the essences that you're going to want to use with the Heart of Azeroth are really ones that focus on percentages instead of actual just flat damage. For example, the major I use is Blood of the Enemy for the 25% increased critical strike chance when you use the ability. The three miners that I use is Condensed Life Force, right, for the extra damage that it can cause to the boss. The, uh, the Memory of the Lucid Dream for the 50% chance of the Fury Refund, and also the Unbound Force for, again, the extra critical strike chance. Now, whatever setup works for you, you could go ahead and use that, but again, I really recommend focusing on the ones that are percentage increases instead of flat damage, like the Crucible of Flame. Crucible of Flame, for example, is going to be a really bad choice. I really recommend not picking something like that that. This will really help increase your damage on certain bosses, especially uh, Mythic Avatar. And if you're not really sure, if you didn't play Battle for Azeroth, first of all, I don't blame you, terrible expansion. If you didn't play Battle for Azeroth, you're not sure to get these essences, I'm not going to include that in this video as it would be much, much longer. And that's not the main focus of the video. I do recommend Googling or checking on Wowhead. They should, you, all these essences should still be obtainable and not too hard, not too difficult to get right now, except maybe for Blood of the Enemy. So there you go. Let's get, actually get into the bosses now. So the first boss is going to be Mythic Goroth, which in my opinion is one of the coolest looking models in the game. I just love the Infernal, the Infernal Pit Lord. I think it's really cool. Now, the Goroth is going to spawn these Infernal Spikes, which you would normally use to avoid other mechanics. However, on Mythic difficulty, guys are going to be destroyed almost instantly. Now, the boss is also going to put a giant circle on you with debuff when it expires. This will increase your damage taken by 100%, so if you have defensives, try and save it for this area. Now, as you can see, the boss will spawn these red circles that if not soaked, will spawn these basically the big infernals that will start casting a channel that these fell fire cast that will instantly destroy all of the pillars. Now you would normally use the pillars for the shattering star, which the boss will just throw a giant meteor at you, which again is really just a big burst of damage. So definitely if you again have another defensive for this area, that is definitely another big burst of damage. Now the second ability we'd hide behind the pillars for is going to be the infernal burning which when the boss casts it you would hide behind the pillar if you don't no pillar so this is going to happen you're going to get knocked back super far and take a, again a large burst of damage with a dot not much you can do about that you just have to eat it and you're just going to get knocked back and the only other mechanic is the boss will put pools on the ground don't stand in them and as ter in terms of killing the infernals in my opinion it's not really worth focusing them and just cleave them down however if you're taking a lot of damage you could definitely switch to them and kill them this boss guys is really just a tank and spank you really just need to kill the boss before he could kill you as there's really no other way to avoid all that incoming damage next boss we're going to be talking about is going to be demonic inquisition these bosses do share hp so make sure you're using cleave abilities to do as much damage as possible on them now this boss is really going to focus Focus around that bar in the center of your screen. Once that bar reaches full red, basically 100%, you will do 99% reduced damage. More on that in a second. Now, the boss will do pangs of guilt, do interrupt. By the way, almost all the abilities the bosses do do cause that. Don't stand in the pools on the ground and interrupt. Now, when your bar does reach 100%, use your extra action button. You'll be ported into a cage and hit the add in there, and this will spawn orbs. Go ahead, collect the orbs, it'll reduce your bar, and then you can reuse your extra action button to get back. Now, on a timer, the bosses will do Fell Squall and Bone Saw. If you attack them while you're doing Fell Squall, for example, it will increase the uh, basically the energy on your bar. However, guys, you might as well just do it. Just do as much damage as possible. This whole fight can really just be described as hit the boss until your bar hits 100 energy, use your extra action button, go downstairs, 
hit the little ad a little bit, collect orbs, go back, and just rinse and repeat. Most of the, basically all, almost all the mechanics the bosses do, do little to no damage to you, and I wouldn't even worry about. As you can see there, by the way, the bone saw is the other ability that if you hit the boss, it will increase the energy on your bar. But really, guys, you're just going to want to go in there and really just nuke the bosses, and I wouldn't even really worry about any mechanics. Simple enough. Let's move on to the next boss. All right, I lied. Before I move on to the next boss, we have to talk about Goroth's hole a little bit, his dirty hole. All right, now my normal TOS video, some people got lost after the, the first two bosses. They were confused. Why is the door not opening? It's because you don't go through a door. From the entrance of the raid, you're going to make a left or down Goroth's big green hole, essentially where he climbed out of, and that will lead you to the next set of bosses. Don't get lost. Moving on to the next boss, and that's going to be Mythic Harjatam, which is one of those big giant Naga dudes. Now this fight is basically just a DPS check, although it is a very easy one since the boss doesn't have that much health. And that comes from the stacking dot he puts on you from pretty much every, almost every other melee attack he puts on you, which is the Jagged Abrasion. Yeah, just a permanent stacking dot, which will eventually kill you. Now, the other thing you need to look out for is the unchecked rage. When the boss gets 100 energy, he will cast an unchecked rage, which is really just a large chunk of damage the boss can do to you. Later on in the fight, if you're low HP, it can actually one-shot you if you're not careful. So, if when you see the boss is about to get full energy, especially again later on to the fight, or if you're low HP, definitely make sure using some kind of personal defensive, as maybe not in Shadowlands, but in the past, it, it's definitely one-shot. You can see here, it's still doing like 20% of my health. So, if you are super low and you don't use a defensive, it, it probably can one-shot you. Now, the really only other thing to mention are the Murloc adds. They'll just melee you a little bit, guys. In my opinion, you're better off putting your damage on the boss and cleaving down the adds. But same thing with Goroth. If you're really struggling from their damage, you can swap to them and nuke them down. Although, again, my opinion, you're really better off just putting your damage into the boss and killing him before the stacking dot gets way too high and kills you. Simple enough. You go in there, slap the boss a little bit. Simple enough. Moving on to the next boss, and that's going to be Mythic Mistress Sazen. Now, this boss has two mechanics that will kill you. The second phase is also a DPS check, which happens at 70% HP. More on that in a second. The first main mechanic is going to be the Delicious Buffer Fist. Shocking to give you buffs when you walk over them and pick them up. However, when you take damage, you also drop them. Since you're soloing, you'll always be taking damage, so no point in picking them up. Now, at certain health percentages, there will be red circles under the ground, as you can see there, and after a few seconds, sharks will come up, and if you're standing in those red circles, you, you just get eaten. You, you just die. You, you, you just die, okay? You're dead. Don't stand in the red circles. You're dead. Anyways, there will also be slicing tornadoes. Just walk through them and get knocked up in the air. You'll take a dot. Not that much damage. And other than that, there's just the eel adds. Kill them off. And if you stand in the green circles that they drop, you will basically do no damage to the boss, right? You'll miss the boss a lot. So don't stand in jellyfish or the red circles and kill ads. Now, when the boss gets to 70% HP, this is going to be your DPS check. As you can see, I'm doing no damage because I'm a fool and standing in the green circles. Pop all your DPS cooldowns, lust if you have them, drums if you're not a lust person. Don't forget to use those drums, right? Go ahead and nuke the boss. You need to get her to 40% HP, and that has to do with the sucking. On a timer, the boss will cast, basically, she'll summon a whale that will start slowly sucking you in towards it. Now, one whale is fine. It's basically just a permanent sucking that you won't be able to get rid of while you're soloing, since you won't have enough ink pools to drag there. And if she casts it a second time, you basically will get super sucked in, and you'll just be instantly killed. I'll show you what happens in the video. Now, other than that, the boss will, boss will spawn a giant lion through the middle. Try not to get hit. If you do, it's not the end of the world you'll just get knocked back pretty far and take a burst of damage again guys the dps check is get the boss from 70 percent to 40 percent before she casts the suck in twice and if she gets one off it's not ideal but it's not the end of the world too basically just keep running in against the giant suck now once you get the boss of 40 percent hp it's really just phase one kill the ads, avoid the sharks on the ground, right? The only real way you die is going to be the red circles from the sharks, and also try and avoid the giant line in the middle. It's not ideal to get hit by, but again, it's not the end of the world. Tanking the boss near the edges of the room does make it easier to dodge. She will also spawn those ink pools on the ground, which technically, if you do this phase long enough, you can get rid of the suck-in. Not really going to bother explaining how, though, guys, since the boss should really be dead before that's even an issue. All right, guys, you just again, just go in there, you kill the boss, don't stand in the green pools on the ground. The only real hard part is pushing the boss from 70% health to 40% before she casts a suck-in twice and you die. 
Let's move on to the next boss. Moving on to the next boss, and that's going to be Mythic Sisters of the Moon. This fight is a complete joke, guys, and is going to be the easiest boss in here, maybe besides Goroth or Demonic Inquisition. In my opinion, this is easier. Now you're going to have a dark side of the moon and also the light side of the moon. When you cross to the other side, it will remove certain debuffs like this Moonburn, and also the important one when the boss does Moonglaive and you get the Discorporate debuff, it reduces your healing taken. Definitely remove that, and again, you do that by moving from light to dark or dark to light. Basically, you move to the other color side of the room. And that's honestly the most dangerous part of the fight. Other than that, the other abilities do very little, if no damage at all. The only other real thing, only other, well, there's a couple things. The other thing to mention is going to be the major abilities. When the room turns either fully light or fully dark, 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 wow, but anyways, English. The, the boss will cast their major abilities, which is either some glaives to avoid, the incorporeal shot, which again will just be a large burst of damage, or the absorb shields, just break through the absorb shields. That's it, guys. The only other mechanic to really mention is in the third phase when you have the priestess. She will put a lunar beacon on you when that expires. You'll start placing pools on the ground, which if you stand in them, you'll basically you'll take some damage and you'll be silenced. Don't stand in the pools. Oh, and I guess there's an ad you, you can you can cleave down. That's it, guys. Honestly, guys, just to summarize for you, you really just go in there, you kill the boss, remove the healing debuff by moving to the opposite end of the room, or basically from light to dark or dark to light, and don't stand in the circles on the ground. That's it. Move on to the next boss. Moving on to the next boss, and that's going to be the Desolate Host, which is another DPS check and also a slightly harder one. Now, there's two realms, the Living Realm and the Spirit Realm. You'll start off in the Living Realm. While you're not in one of the, if you're not in the other realm, the other boss will be doing a cast. You can see that explosion there, which will increase in damage over time, and that's going to be your DPS check. Now, once you're in the Living Realm, I actually recommend not killing the ads. That was a mistake there, as you will eventually be put in the Spirit Realm, and then you'll have to deal with those ads down there taking extra damage, so try not to nuke those ads. Now, the boss will eventually do the Spear of Anguish, which when it finishes, will just knock you into the Spirit Realm, also resetting, by the way, the your time to kill the boss, so that is helpful. Basically, guys, as soon as you pull the boss, you want to lust, pop all your cooldowns, do as much damage as possible. You can kill the ads. They will eventually take reduced damage, so it is a little bit hard. Don't focus them. All your damage should be put into the boss's health. You also have to get soul bind on you, which is basically another kind of a hard hitting dot, adding to the damage, and also whether again adding to the damage. Basically, it's a lot of damage. You really need to kill the bosses before you die. And at 30% HP, the desolate host will actually be ejected out. And this is again basically just more damage. Now the desolate host will cast Sundering Doom, which don't even bother trying to run away from. I try to, as its damage is reduced from distance, and also Doom Sundering, which just stand on the boss and take the damage. Now from this point, the Soul Queen and also the Desolate Host, they do share HP. Definitely get rid of the Soul Queen and Engine. Once you do, this fight becomes a joke. Once the Soul Queen and Engine of Souls dies, your DPS check is pretty much done. There's technically still is one with the Desolate Host, but the damage becomes a lot less and you'll have a lot easier time. So just to reiterate for you guys, as soon as you start the fight, pop all your DPS cooldowns, nuke the boss before you die. Once the Spear of Anguish, you'll be put into the Spirit Realm. 30% HP, the Desolate Host comes out. Finish off the Soul Queen and Engine, and then you can kill the Desolate Host, and you're done. Let's move on to the next fight. Next fight is going to be the Mythic Maiden of Vigilance. This fight is also fairly simple to do, if you understand the mechanics. Now, as soon as you start the fight, the boss will cast Infusion, and either put a yellow debuff on you, or a green debuff. Now, for the rest of the fight, if you touch any other color from that debuff, you will get a bomb on your head, right? As you can see there. And once that bomb expires, you'll get knocked up in the air. Although, if you kind of stand where I am right now, it's a neat little trick. You will actually sometimes just won't get knocked up. If you do, though, it's just a knock up in the air. You'll take a burst of damage, obviously fall damage when you land, unless you have something to avoid it. Not much you can do. Anyways, when the fight starts, you'll basically also do the hammer of obliteration. So take a burst of damage, put the pool on the ground. If you are just to avoid the knockback, I do actually recommend standing in the pool or the knock up, right? And then at a certain time, the boss will basically teleport to the other side of the room. Now note your debuff here. She's going to start sending out orbs and you want to pick up the orbs of the same color so if you have yellow get yellow green get green and this is going to give you a stacking damage buff try and pick up as many orbs as you can until either you hit 10 stacks or the boss just stops spawning them in general again this increases your damage now once you do this is where you're going to want to use your dps cooldowns by the way lust everything nuke the boss and break her shield now she'll be casting wrath of the creators and you can see on her bar this is gaining a stacking buff every time it pulses and if it hits 30 stacks you just die 
So don't interrupt the boss until she's about to hit 30 stacks as it's pretty much just free damage. Interrupt her at 28 or 29 stacks and then basically just nuke her down. The fight just repeats from there. Although honestly, if you used all your DPS cooldowns with the damage buff, she should really die before you even see that phase again. This fight is very, very easy to do as long as you understand basically where you're getting the damage buff from, right? Let's move on to the hardest fight in the whole raid. Moving on to fall on Avatar. This is going to be the hardest fight in the raid to solo, basically because it's just a major DPS check. Now, any damage you do in phase one will basically just be healed up by the boss. So don't use any cooldowns. Just basically get some of your resource and just wait. Don't soak any of the beams. Avoid the swirlies. Also, if you spec defensively up to this point, spec completely offensive. You need all the damage you can. Now, as soon as the boss reaches 100 energy and eats the maiden, start doing as much damage to him as you can. He will destroy the floor and this is where the DPS check begins. Now, pop lust potions, make sure you're using shadow core oils or whatever oil you use, anything, you're going to nuke the boss and start slowly dragging him to the corner without losing DPS. Now, he's also going to do rain of the destroyer, which will start destroying the floor. Don't even worry about soaking unless it's on the platform, the corner you are standing on. Definitely soak the meteor so it doesn't destroy the platform there. Again, nuke the boss as hard as you can, and the boss will eventually put dark mark on you. When this expires, you'll get knocked up in the air. If you have something to avoid it, make sure you do it, whether it's a charge, a glide, or whatever. Get back to the ground for damage, and the boss will eventually start doing rupture realities. Now, you don't need to run right away. The lava won't kill you instantly. Do as much damage as you can until you need to get away. Now, you're gonna, this will probably take a couple tries to get used to. From there, don't even bother dragging him to another corner. Just drag him to the closest platform as you can. Again, soak rain or the destroyer if it is on a platform you are standing on. You'll get another dark mark and you need to kill the boss before, basically almost before he finishes the rupture realities as you only have a few seconds after. Again, you can see here the boss will once again do rupture realities and at this point you'll have no platform left and you'll be in the lava and you'll almost be dead so the boss basically you this is where your dps check comes in by the way a neat little trick you could do as a demon hunter if you double jump while you're over the lava you won't take any damage giving you an extra few seconds again guys this is a major 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 dps check i believe from that point on you have maybe what 30 to 40 seconds to kill the boss with castle nathria gear i just barely managed to kill him this will obviously become much much easier as shadowlands goes on and you will get more gear but right now guys this is a major dps check you essentially need to kill the boss before he casts rupture realities twice assuming you drag him to the proper corner for the first rupture realities this will this will, honestly most guys most of you probably won't be able to solve this right now i'm gonna be real with you this is a very very difficult fight to solo right now but if you manage to get it you move on to kill Jaden, which is the second hardest boss to solo in the instance right now. Let's get right to it. Moving on to the final boss, and also in my opinion, the second hardest is going to be Mythic Kill Jaden. Now, first things first, you're going to see I put markers in the corners of the room. These are just to mark each corner of the room. So top right, bottom right, bottom left, top left. That will be helpful for a phase later on, that being the dark phase. So if you want to mirror that to help you with the corners, I definitely recommend doing that. I'll put a screenshot of that in the video for you guys. Now let's move on to the actual boss fight. Now this is going to be where if your class has low mobility, you're probably going to have a harder time than classes with higher mobility. However, it is still doable with them. It's not impossible, just a little bit harder. So the first phase is pretty easy, but there's a couple things you need to know. The first one is going to be the Armageddon Circles. Now, if you stand in these, you'll soak and you'll get in a longer dot. If you don't soak any, you'll take a burst of damage and gain more dots, but shorter duration. In my opinion, guys, don't soak any of them. It's not worth the longer dot. Take the damage and take the smaller hard hitting dot. Now, the boss is also going to debuff you and make you basically big, when the debuff expires, it'll spawn an erupting reflection ad. Now, if your healing depends on leech, do not kill this ad in the first phase immediately. More on that in a second. The only other thing to know about the first phase are going to be the fell claws debuff, which when he hits you with his melee swings, when he casts fell claws, you'll gain increased damage, phys physical damage taken. Now at 80%, the boss is going to fly up into the air and just start the first intermission. Now the only things he'll do are going to be the Armageddon soak, so put a circle on you and also a line through you, which just does a burst of damage. The most important thing though during this phase are going to be the rupturing singularities. Now obviously so you're when these would come down first of all don't stand directly on top of them but when they land you'll see you'll get knocked back real far what you're going to want to do look around each corner of the platform and make sure if there's two rupturing singularities at once you always get knocked towards the next 
rupturing singularity as a knockback is so big if you don't especially if you're a low mobility class chances are you will just get knocked off of the platform now this is where health potions and also that leech ad comes in health potions obviously to help heal yourself up and the ad if you are really dependent on leech like a demon hunter or if you just have leech gear since it's legacy content you can actually use that ad to dps off of as you can see i'm about to do here and heal yourself to full or as full as you can now when you do kill the ad you'll start spawning swirlies and orbs on the ground just keep running and avoid them not a big deal the hard part, the two difficult parts of this phase are going to be the rupturing singularities, making sure you don't get knocked off. That is probably going to be what gets you killed the most. And also just the constant dot damage and the damage the boss does to you. If you don't have any self heals and your healing depends on actually hitting a target. Again, health potions, defensives. If you could get warlock health stones, that would also be helpful. And using the ad the boss spawns in the first phase to leech off of should get you through that phase, even if it's just barely until you can leech off the boss again, or just simply heal yourself up if your class has healing specs. Now, the second phase is pretty similar to the first phase. There's a couple other ads and also rupturing singularities. Now, neat little trick you could do with the fell claws here. I will show you eventually in the video right here. You can actually kite out the buff the boss gets in order to drop stacks of the fell claws. Even with class, even the stuff like DK, if you have like Venthyr Teleport or Night Face Soul Shape, you should be able to kite it out. Anyways, in this phase, make sure same thing for the rupturing singularities. You get as close to them as you can, and if there's two of them, you get knocked back to the other one. Now, at a timer, the boss will spawn these green ads. If you have healing abilities, I do actually recommend healing the uh, the ads up as it'll make the fight a little bit easier for you. However, if you don't heal those ads to full when their debuff or they're basically their timer expires, they're going to spawn a giant purple pool on the ground where if you stand in it, you just take some ticking damage and you also silence. That happens. Not a big deal. Just don't stand in the pool. Then the other ad the boss will spawn is the Wailing Reflection. This is a tank ad. It will just melee you. It will spawn a circle on the ground. You can focus it down hard if you want. However, it doesn't have that much health, so you can technically just cleave it down. In my opinion, it doesn't do that much damage. But if you're struggling with it, you can kill it. So again, guys, this phase is pretty much avoid the rupture. Don't get knocked off the, by the rupturing singularities. That is what is going to kill you the most. Maybe that, and then the second one would be the Fell Claws. If that debuff stacks up too high, you will start taking a lot of damage. So try and kite it out if you can. Now, eventually, you're going to keep DPSing the boss until he gets to 40% HP, and this is probably the hardest part of the whole fight, in my opinion. Now, the boss will cast Deceiver's Veil, and he's going to turn your whole screen black. Now, during this, this wouldn't be an issue if the rupturing singularities didn't happen. Now, as you can see here, my DBM timer is going off, rupturing singularity. They have a set order the bosses, the, uh, the orbs spawn in. Now, it will always spawn on the top right corner first, which is where I have the X marker. You can see I'm going over there now. Then it will go to the bottom right, then the bottom left, and then the top left corner. Again, it is the same order every single time. That is why I put the marks down for you guys. You can see here over by blue, I'm going to go ahead and get knocked over that way. Now, if you're a class like a demon hunter, you don't even have to worry about these. I'm just showing you for the purpose of the video. If you have stuff to avoid the knockback completely, don't even worry about this. Now, once now that you understand the knockbacks and that they spawn in the same spot every single time you do this, here's how this phase works. You need to run around the platform and find Illidan. You need to search for him and he will give you a buff that actually lets you damage the ads. You can't really damage these Shadow Soul ads unless you have the Illidan buff. Now, again, this is really difficult for classes that depend on Leech. If you depend on Leech, try and get the Illidan buff as soon as you can so you can start leeching off these Shadow Soul ads. If you have a class that has self heals, I believe if I remember correctly, the way it works is that you do actually need the Illidan debuff in order to heal yourself. I could be wrong on that, but I believe that is the way it works. Anyways, guys, this phase is avoid the knockbacks. A reminder, they spawn in the same location each time. Top right, bottom right, bottom left, top left, and then it just repeats from there until you eventually kill all of these Shadow Soul ads and get out of the phase. This is going to take some practice to get used to until you remember the exact spawn locations and the, the order of the rupturing singularities. Also, if you have deadly boss mods, the add-on is very, very helpful for that. Now, moving on to the last phase, boss will cast Darkest of Thousand Souls, which puts a dot on you. He was also going to cast Tear Rift, which eventually is just going to start sucking you slowly into the rift. I wouldn't really worry too much about that. Just don't get fully sucked into the rift. Now, the dangerous part of this phase are going to be the Demonic Obelisk, as you can see there. After they or their timer fires off, they're going to shoot beams and basically a cross sign or a plus sign. You can see here from each, uh, they're going to shoot it straight and also left and right. You can see here, they shoot it out. 
if you get hit by that, you'll take some damage and get knocked back most likely off the platform. The only other mechanic is the flaming orb. The way this works is, is if it fixates you, you when it hits you, it'll spawn a pool based on the distance you kite it. So the longer you kite it, the smaller the pool is. In my opinion, guys, even if you really don't want to kite it that much, the taking damage from the pool, in my opinion, is not that important. Also, it's not the end of the world if one hates you, basically, guys. If you need to step in the pools for a little bit just to avoid the demonic obelisk, fine. What's really going to kill you in this phase, guys, are, are going to be A, the Demonic Obelisk getting knocked off, and also the Fell Claws debuff. So again, if you can kite Fell Claws, try and kite it. As you can see here, I got a giant pool. Not a big deal. You can stand and take some taking damage. Move at it if you can, if it's ideal, right? But definitely don't gimp your DPS over it. Now, I decided to stop DPS to show you the darkness of a thousand... I forgot what it was. Basically, the boss is going to fly into the air, right? Darkness of a thousand souls. The way this would work is you would go into the rift and you would avoid the damage completely. But chances are, the rift will be gone by the time that happens. So I wouldn't even worry about it. They'll just get an extra dot on you. Not that big of a deal. Again, what's really going to kill you are going to be the demonic obelisk and also the fell claws. And that's Mythic Kill Jaden. And that's pretty much it, guys. That is how to solo Mythic to Masari Garrus. Again, the two hardest bosses being the last two. Mythic Avatar, in my opinion, being the hardest just because of the super tight DPS check. And also Kill Jaden, especially if you're a class with lower mobility for that darkness phase. Now, if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will do my best to answer them. And by the way, if you're wondering why I left some mechanics out, chances are some of the mechanics just do absolutely nothing. So I didn't even bother mentioning them in the video. Wouldn't even worry about them. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I do hope this guide helped you out. Again, any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If it did help you, hey, throw it a like. It makes me happy. Subscribe to the channel. And Halo 3 is the best Halo. And that is just a fact. If you don't like that, bye.